Okay, so here we are in Melbourne at Audio Active. I'm sitting here with Michael from Sony. How are you, mate? Very good, thank you. And above our heads is the Sony Raptor, or otherwise known as the VPL GTZ380. Tell us a bit about this projector because I'm pretty impressed to be honest. Yeah, great. It's a 10,000 lumen 4K, native 4K SXRD projector. Yep. Um, you know, super wide color gamut projector, um, full DCI-P3 P3 coverage. Yep, yep. Um, you know, really suited to home cinema use, you know, super bright and super wide color gamut. Yep, yep. So I'm actually looking at the picture now. We'll Here take we some shots. The picture is sensational. Um, detailed depth, uh, three dimensionality of the image is lovely. Um, tell me a little bit about the construction. Actually, before you do, I want to say when I came into the room, there's two things that really hit me straight away. One is form factor. This thing is not massive. It, it's a bit larger than a standard projector, but not by much. And um, it's quiet. It's really quiet, which is great. And it runs off a 10 amp socket. So. Tell us more. Yeah, so to speak to that a little bit, I mean, one of the challenges with, um, I guess, projectors of this type is mm. to get them into a, a size or physical size that can be more flexible in use. So, mm. you know, the architecture of the projector, and Andrew will show you later on, is not huge. I mean, from a front view, it's pretty similar to the 890 that's also in the mm. um, in the uh, rack up here. Yep. A little bit deeper. Um, you know, um, it is big in comparison to small home cinema projectors, mm. but in terms of larger format projectors, it's quite small. Yep. Um, you know, this particular projector has five fans moving air around within it and a, and a water cooler to keep it cooler. and you know that helps uh, i guess keep that fan noise and audible noise to a minimum Down. Yep. yep yep so you know there, there's some you know, quite smart r d and development into making this projector as small and flexible for use as possible yep. but still maintaining super high brightness and super wide color space yep. now the other thing that makes a great projector is great optics yep. great good lens the lens in this is interchangeable yeah yeah so this is um this family of uh, projectors or lenses that this two are a standard or a uh, standard throw and a, and a shorter throw it, it, it fills out um the breaking out brief in our arc f lens range mm. so in this projector there's a range of different elements from you know floating elements to uh, more focused elements and a big huge piece of uh, uh, glass on the front that helps uh, give us wide dispersion mm. so we can maximize the sweet spot on the mm. on the on the on the screen mm. you know that large piece of um, glass yeah absolutely gives us the biggest possible sweet spot so we're not yeah. narrowing down the focal area where it's as, it's as wide as possible so the image is nice and sharp right up to the corners convergence is really good that sort of thing yeah Actually, is convergence even a thing on this yeah it is because it's a three chip projector right, okay, so we yep. still mm. we still deal with um, convergence and the projector has ways of doing that yep. but you know to, answer, to to go back to what you just said you know absolutely you know um, the challenge with projection is to make it corner to corner sharpness yes, you know yep. to create that the projector has two ways to do that it has a, a very large focus area from the lens itself mm -hmm. and then it has a, some soft uh, some software technology in the, so the corners to help um, render those corners sharper as well right, yep, yep. you know and as a home cinema projector you know that's nice mm -hmm. to have a sharp corner to corner space but if this was in a another uh, um, deployment mm. where the the center of the screen might be the edge yep. it's important to have every element sharp yep. not just the you know the middle sounds the a little bit like what DxO does for photography I don't know if you're into that but um, DxO have a thing where you know they they uh, analyze the lenses and then they use software and electronics to you know, yeah. tidy the image up. Uh, uh, well, absolutely. You know, the, the lens app in this particular one is huge <coughs> and, it, and it actually gives us a nice, huge, sweet spot. But, mm. you know, those corners, if they soften for whatever reason, yep. um, you know, there's a there's a, a technology to help to you. To deal with that. It. That's yep. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then, sorry, and also in that, you know, what we haven't talked about is this is powered by X1 Ultimate. Mm. You know, this is a technology filtered down from our Bravia mm. um, our TV deployment and, you know, it really gives this um, image with the sharpness of the lens, but also, you know, the way X1 Ultimate the works. Processing. Yeah, the yeah. processing, yeah. the way it works is, you know, frame by frame, pixel by pixel, looking at what the image is, mm. kind of placing items or uh, objects onto the screen rather than just laying them flat. Mm. Gives, um, um, there's a lot of native contrast, mm. a really sharp, great big lens, mm. and that processing helps really sharpen out the image. Yeah, yeah. no, that's awesome. Um, the other thing I liked about it is that, you know, as you get into the bigger projectors, um, operating systems can get a little bit more complex. Yep. Um, I was quite pleasantly surprised and almost taken aback when you, you hit the remote and the good old familiar Sony menu popped up and I went, huh, okay, cool, <laughs> I know this. Yep. So, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, 
asking what if it's not broken you don't need to fix it yeah. the, the the menu really is is you know that you history history our history is full of this same menu, yeah, right yeah. back to our, well... It's been very oh, consistent yeah, for a long time. Yeah, yeah. it adds and yeah. subtracts us some elements, but really the core part of the way the menu looks is the same. And our OS on this projector hasn't evolved in that respect. So tell me a bit more about the laser. So the laser is a cluster of... Yeah, well, when we pioneered um, blue phosphor laser projection systems back in 2013, so yep. it's been around for a while, you yep. know, that, that Z phosphor technology uses a cluster of blue lasers yep. that fire into a yellow phosphor wheel, the yep. phosphor wheel excites, and that creates white light. That has some limitations around the colour volume mm. that it can produce without using filters. Mm. This produce, this projector can do full DCI P3 coverage without, without a, a filter, filter. Yeah, yeah, which is a significant change from other projector mm. technologies. Yep. Mm. And to achieve that, um, the laser light source itself has been re redefined. So using still that phosphor um, cluster technology mm. with additional lasers, mm. blue and red, to expand that color gamut mm. to give us a wider DCI-P3 coverage mm. um, um, and allow us to get that coverage without engaging a filter and losing brightness. You know, awesome. I think it's a bit of a trade-off when you start adding filters and losing brightness when you're, when you're trying to do dynamic range improvements. Yep. To kind of seems like a negative trade-off, and this projector addresses that really no, well. It's awesome. Look, I, 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 I think that the projector speaks for itself. I think it's a great piece of kit. Uh, is there anything else that you want to mention about it? I, I can't. I think we've covered most of the information. No, look, it's just a really, it's a, it's a beautiful projector. Yeah. It's you know, it is a flagship projector. Yeah. It's certainly not, um, you know, it, 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 it's a projector you need to see, mm. you know, experience, and um, you know, this space and other spaces we've done, you know, help, mm. you know, make it come to life I guess and I yeah. guess the last question lifespan yeah yeah so look the, um, from a warranty perspective perspective in Australia it has a five-year warranty yeah. or 12,000 hours um, uh, and the ex the ex so the expected life good of the laser I guess yeah like late, 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 it's, a, it's an inter interesting question because it really depends on how you run the projector yep, yep. but you know if you if you were to run this in a, a full brightness mode over over uh, 20,000 hours it would reduce around by around about 40 percent so mm -hmm. around about between sixty and fifty percent over, over 20, the entire yeah, life, of yeah, 20, yeah, hours, and that's yeah. a linear drop off. But you wouldn't run this thing at full bore in a home. Well, it's but, super, as yeah. you can, you'll be able to see later on. It's yeah. actually pretty bright, you yeah. know. And yeah. you know, one of the nice things about projection can be that you know that softer image on the eyes is something that's comfortable. And yeah. sometimes a super bright projector like this kind of looks more like a TV and yeah. can give you that that. That, yeah, that harsh on the eye, yeah. yeah, and not not that that's a negative. It has to cut through a lot of color volume with a lot of HDR content, mm. but um, you, you you definitely wouldn't be you know watching sport with this in mm. as high a brightness as, as it could produce. It would you know it would be so, painful. Yeah. So I think um you know the flexibility in that allows you know that linear line not to be so linear in terms of full <laughs> user case. No, that's yeah. awesome. Look, um, uh, you know, we've been showing some images and some video of the unit as we've been going here. This is a great unit and I want to thank Bruce from Audio Active and Mike Bromley from Sony. Thanks, mate. Really no appreciate worries. it. That's and, uh, uh, you know, thank you for explaining the unit to us. We'll, uh, we'll uh, be looking at this very closely in the future, I think. No worries. Thanks Cheers. for coming. Bye-bye.